the genesis of, of Hill Street, I think, came from Fred Silverman, who had seen a movie called Fort Apache, the Bronx, with Paul Newman. And, and there was a, a, an aspect of that movie that I think enthralled Fred, and, and it had to do with the personal life of this cop, you know. And so they wanted something that had to do with the personal lives of cops. And I, I, I didn't particularly want to do another cop show. Mike Kozel didn't particularly want to do another cop show. Uh, the reason Michael and I were, were meeting with them together was that, at my urging actually, MTM had made a writer's deal with, with Mike, which was coming to a close. And he really hadn't done anything uh, for one reason or another. So Stu Irwin said, would, would you work with Michael on, on, this, uh, on a pilot for NBC? I said, sure, I love Michael. You know? uh, and you know, I'd had my brains beaten in so badly on Paris, I thought having a partner would be a great thing. You know? So it was off that that we, that we had these meetings. And, he didn't want to do a cop show. He'd worked on cop shows. I'd worked on cop shows. We didn't feel like we had a whole lot to bring to the party, you know, that was fresh. Um, but they were insistent that that's what they wanted. So Michael and I went off to talk about it. And I, off that conversation, we agreed that we would do it on, on one condition, which we assumed would kill the deal right there. And I said to Brandon, I said, we'll do this pilot for you on the condition that you leave us completely alone to do whatever we want. And he said, okay. Oh. oh now, now we're stuck with it. So we go back and, and we start. You know, and, and this is in January already for, for something that has to be in front of the cameras in, in March. So whew, not a lot of time. So we instantly started writing. And, and it was one of those remarkable experiences where, you know, Michael, such a good writer and, and, and so imaginative and, and had so many characters rattling around in this trunk over the years. And, and I had a whole bunch of characters and ideas rattling, rattling around in my trunk. And, and, and the two of us just sort of, bam, came together on this thing. And we started to work, and about four days into it, we, we got a big blackboard in the office and we started scribbling things and characters and things and stories and this and that. And uh, about four days in, we got a call from somebody at NBC saying, so when are you guys going to come in and tell us your story? And, we, and I said, well, we're not. What do you mean you're not? You got to come in and tell us your story? I said, no, no, no. I said, you told us we could just go off and do this thing with no interference from you, and we're taking you at your word. And I said, and if you'd just be patient for about another five days, we'll have a script. And we did. We, we wrote that script in 10 days. And uh, it was remarkable. It was a great, great script. And everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. And then we wound up getting this... Uh, three-page, single-spaced memo from Broadcast Standards. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't... So, so we went over to have a meeting, and I said to Michael, I said, well, let's not just argue. Let's not argue with them about anything. Let's just hear, hear what they had to say. So now they start going through their list of things, and, and because we weren't fighting them on anything, I sort of in, in, in the vacuum, they eliminated like half their own notes just as they went. Oh, well, we, you know, we don't need this. We don't. And at the end of the meeting, I, I, I just got up and said, you know what, we, we can't do this project. Because I said, this project will not be what you wanted us to do and what we want to do if we have to accommodate all these ridiculous notes. And I left. So, they went berserk. They called. They called Grant Tinker. What is he doing? This, I, you know. I said, Grant. 
I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. And Grant got a little pissy at me. You know, he got a, a mad at me. And, and I really, it was the first time Grant and I ever actually had a bit of a conflict because I was digging my heels in. And, um, you know, that was, the, that was when I began to hear words about myself. It's arrogant, this, he's that, the pop, 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 pop. And, and my attitude was, call me what you will, but I know that I've got a great project here. And I don't know how many great projects there are going to be in my life, and I'm not going to screw this one up. I'd rather not do it. And uh, they folded. They, they virtually folded on every point. And, and then we started to, to cast and do all that stuff. And I, I remember uh, the casting director, it was the head of, the head of M, uh, NBC casting, was, was Joel Thurm, who uh, subsequently became a good pal, you know. But in those days, you have to remember that that, that, that was an era in which networks had almost total control over every aspect of, of production. They had casting approval, they had writer approval, they, they had story approval. You know, you had to pitch them everything. And here, here we had sort of in an impetuous moment from, from a network floundering in last place, extracted the, the promise of creative autonomy. And I knew, I knew that I had something unprecedented you know, in terms of, of just that kind of uh, control. And I wasn't going to give it up, because I knew if I gave it up, I'd never get it back. Why so, do you think they gave it to you? Well, because they wanted this pilot from us. That's why. And, and, and I, I don't think they really considered the consequence of, of what they were giving us. 